Hello, it's Dr. Abstract. Welcome to Zim Docs. We're going to take a look today at the docs and at PIC right here. PIC. This is relatively new. It was introduced in Zim version Zim 00. So previously we had used a thing called Asset to load PICs right here. Asset. And now we can use a, a new PIC. So loading an asset such as a picture or a sound, or a, an SVG or a video, those we call assets, and we have a set of things that we use. PIC, odd for audio, vid, and SVG. These used to be loaded with assets. Actually, video is new, completely new. But uh, PIC, odd, and SVG used to be loaded with assets. So we're going to go through now what uh, PIC is like. It's quite easy, really. We scroll on down here, new pick, and we say where the pick is, and then we can center it. Uh, but if we're viewing things locally, there can be a security error, error, unfortunately. So this is on all Canvas frameworks, not just Zim. Uh, and it doesn't cause a problem when viewing it on a server, but you might want to test your files locally as well. So that can be quite confusing if you don't know what this cores issue means, cross-origin resource sharing. So here in the tips, we tell you about that right away. And uh, we're telling you uh, about the error right here in the docs as well. Um, let's see. So there's a lot of things that we can look at. There's two different ways in general, well, three different ways that we can load a picture. One is we can lazy load, that is just say new pick. Uh, the other way is that we can load, preload it's called. So there we are saying what the picture is and the folder that the picture is in. And we're putting that in the frame. And that will preload it. And then we can ask for a new pick and we know that it's already loaded. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. And the last is that you can, uh, let's see if there's an example of it in here. No, it doesn't look like it. So the last one is to uh, run this pr uh, command called load assets. And so let's go to the tips one here. So this is this is um, now, you know, go to the top. This is Zim tips. Zim tips is available down here tips in the gold bars of Zim. So if you go to tips and press images, then you'll see uh, tips about loading images. So I'm going to do that. And in this one, let's see, to adjust our eyes. This is all very white, isn't it? That hasn't got one either. Assets, complete. Ah, here it is, yes. So this is it right here. So here's the frame, uh, oh, there's the frame, and note that we didn't preload. And then what we're doing is we're using frame.loadAssets, which is a method of the frame, to load this asset in the path. That will preload these, and when it's, well, it's kind of preload, it's loading it on demand. <laughs> um, and, and then when it's complete, then we know that it's loaded. So the issue is, in general, that before we load a picture, we don't know how big it is, and therefore we can't do things, some things like um, tile it or make a, um, a scroller from it, because we don't know how big it is before we try and make those objects. We initially, we didn't even know how to center it because we don't know its size. So that created a problem. And the solution was in CreateJS and in, in Zim all the way up until version 10 of Zim, the solution was to preload it. You would have to preload it so that when it's loaded, then we can use it. <laughs> and so we would either preload it in the frame it's not an example. So here's the preloading in the frame. So frame, we say assets, please preload any assets. You could use an array of assets there as well, or array of images. Um, and a path, that's optional. And then the frame will say, oh, okay, I've loaded that. And when we're ready, then we can use it. So there, there we are using it. I would recommend uh, that you preload your assets 
um, it just makes a little bit more sense. The, the only issue is, what if you're not gonna use all your assets yet? Say on page two or part two of your app, there's lots of more assets. Well, maybe they don't even, people don't even go to part two. Why would we, why would we cause all those assets to be loaded and we don't even need them yet? So here are the two, two cases. If we're going to need the assets at the beginning, then put them in the frame call, passing it in as an assets parameter. If we need them later on, then load them later on with frame.load assets. So that might be to go to part two, you do this, and when they're complete, then you go to part two. Okay, so those have been the traditional ways to load assets. Um, a new way or an easier way is the lady, lazy loading, lady loading, the lazy loading where we don't have any preloading and we just go ahead and use it. So what we've done in Zim in the background is rather than actually try and center this asset at this time, because we don't know how big it is, therefore we can't really center it. We don't know its dimensions, that is. Um, what we do is we hold off, we say, okay, I, I'm, I'm remembering that I'm supposed to be centered. And then we wait until this actually loads and calls um, a, a complete event. So basically for every lazy loaded one, we're doing an individual loading anyway in the background. A complete event happens. And then when we when it's complete, then Zim sort of says, okay, now I'll center it or now, what was I supposed to do? And it goes back through all of the commands that it's had, such as center reg or center or outline or whatever the commands may be. And then it redoes those commands. <laughs> so all of that, just so that you can be lazy and load your images. <laughs> it's like, um, There are some things though, that just are too complicated to handle, such as tiling something. Uh, there, tiling can load a bunch of different images into a tile and if they're all different sizes and loading in at different times we just went okay never mind <laughs> no <laughs> and other things too a few few of them like a sprite a tile and a scroller there might be other ones as well these are the ones that we've sort of flagged uh, there's you know a lot of things that happen in zim for instance i don't know maybe you're putting it in a layer that has a transform i think we tried it with transform and we're okay so if you add dot transform here Probably, I think it'll work, but I can't remember if we've tried it in a layer with transport. <laughs> so anyway, there's various combinations that might happen. Uh, if it doesn't turn out for you, let us know and we can add, add that to the list or try and fix it so it does work. But in general, um, adding images is relatively straightforward. There, as mentioned, are three different ways. The lazy loading, which one's this? This is the preloading. Um, let's see what else to say about it. If it's an absolute URL, make sure to use HTTPS. So here we're using a relative path. Uh, usually we make an asset folder or assets folder. And then we put all of our assets like images and sound in that assets folder. And that way we could pass in an array here of a bunch of different things to load all from the same path. That's the easiest. There are, as it says down here, there are a bunch of different ways to load assets and you can go to the docs and see pick. Uh, there's things like an asset object. There's a, <laughs> there's um, multi-asset object. <laughs> so there's different different ways, but um, the, the, the best way probably is for you to just pass it in as the assets parameter. Um, this, by the way, isn't how we usually do a frame. Like if you take a look at the template, oh, why don't we go take a look at the template? Template, boop, boop, boop. Just back in docs. So uh, I'll open up a new browser window here and go to Zim. And under the code section here, here's our template. So this is the, because it's a template, it's the most common way right here. And usually what we do is the assets are the next parameter. So this is the fit, the size, the color, comma, and some array of assets, comma, the path. The, the one after that is, as it says back here in tips, the one after, multiple frames, oh, I'm in the frame, sorry, images. 
I think oh, it moved when I when I rescaled this. Um, frame that load assets and it moved again. Sound boop 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 boop. <laughs> I scaled it back up. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, okay. Uh, so the next two parameters after that. Uh, oh, sorry. The next two parameters after the colors are the assets in the path, and the next one after that is the progress parameter. So you can pass in a new waiter or a new progress bar. Either one of those will work. A waiter does three little dot dots while your assets are loading. A progress bar will give you a circle that fills up, uh, a ring that fills up, or a, a straight bar if you choose, choose that. Um, so this one we were just we didn't put in this is going to be the the full mode therefore but we didn't put in all those other parameters in there but generally what we do is we just load the assets in the path after we do the the scaling the size the colors and then it comes the assets all right that would be the traditional one and that's what i would use if i were you for a new pick um, we have had in the past uh, asset, so you'll see all sorts of examples out there uh, that say asset instead, because like I said, we've just launched pick. So you can still use asset just like we did before. The one thing that would confuse people with assets is if you needed a second asset, then you would have to clone the first asset. Otherwise, it would just move the asset because asset was a reference to the bitmap and it would just move the same bitmap to somewhere else unless you clone it. And that would always catch people. So that was one reason we introduced new pick uh, because new pick, you can just make a new pick and that is in a sense, a clone of the asset. And when you make new pick, it is again, another clone. So those are two objects now, different objects. And that makes more sense to people, I think. Um, just beware that pick is actually a container. So uh, it's a container that holds the bitmap. The bitmap is available with a bitmap property if you really need the bitmap, but you probably won't notice. It's similar to how we make a Zim rectangle or circle or triangle, etc. Those things are a container that holds a rectangle shape or a circle shape. Well, new pick is a container that holds a bitmap. Uh, that can catch you sometimes, like if you needed specifically to use a bitmap uh, for something. But in general, most of the places where that's happened, we, we work it out for you in Zim. So hopefully you won't even notice. The asset was of type bitmap. And here was a little bit of a trick. If it were lazy loaded, then it is a container with a type of image. And inside it was a bitmap. <laughs> So, um, yeah, there were kind of two different things that it was when it was an asset. It could have been either a bitmap or an image, depending on whether it was lazy loaded. With the pick, it's always a pick. Oh, actually, that's not true. It's an asset container until it becomes a pick, and then it's a pick. So you can always tell if it's, uh, what, if it's still loading because it would be an asset container. And if it's still loading, then you have um, a complete event that's available for you as well if you really need it. But in general, you probably won't. Um, another thing, if you, if you ever do run into problems when you're loading a pick, say you try and do something and it doesn't seem to work because it hasn't loaded yet, you can always try adding two, um, two parameters. The next two parameters are the width and the height. So if you hard code the width and height in there, I think that solves everything because then we know how big it is as we're trying to operate on it. So you're always welcome to do that, but you don't need to. Um, it should be able to figure it out. So these have been some kind of the nuances of a uh, pick. In general, it's pretty easy to use, as mentioned. Here is that issue, though, with uh, what's called the cores issue. So I'm going to take a look at that now. It's right here at the top of images, a security error that will mention cores. Uh, I have an example of it right here. We've loaded this example of assets, uh, pick, odd, vid, and odd, and SVG. This is uh, a new example in Zim 00. Uh, I can show you it working, but this is it not working. Um, we've also reintroduced the broken image icon, which looks very strange in this case because the scale is huge. And so what you're seeing in behind here is actually a scaled up huge 
broken image. I think what happened is we scaled the image to the 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 uh, browser window or the, to the frame, and it's actually scaled the broken image icon up. Think of that. Anyway, if we look here, F12 will show us the console. The console is saying access to um, this request right here, this examples.jpg from origin whatever has been blocked by cores policy, so a cross origin problem. This is us trying to load an image locally. You see the local file here, uh, d colon, file d colon. So this is not on the internet. On the internet, it works fine. But locally, we're trying to, to load an image and we have interactivity. So that's when it happens. If we're interacting with something, um, it's called a tainted canvas in a sense. And it's just any canvas framework, 3JS, whatever, the, the same issues uh, would happen here. So in our tips, we say how to get around this. Uh, let's just take a look at Chrome. You can read about it for Firefox. You can read about it on Mac. But I'm on a PC in Chrome. And basically what you're wanting to do is add allow file access from files, nice, with a space. So there's a space there, there's two dashes. So basically you just copy that right there and add it after your Chrome uh, shortcut. So I'm going to reduce this down here and reduce that one down. We'll go see the Chrome, there's my Chrome shortcut right there. And I right click on that and say properties. And there's the target right there. That's opening up the Chrome EXE. Note that there's quotes there. That's going to be really small for you, but there's a quote there still. And then I pasted in that bit on the end. Uh, the next trick is if you want that to work. So uh, if you want that to work, that means you need to open up your Chrome from that shortcut. What I did to make this not work is I didn't open the Chrome from the shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> or if you didn't have that on your shortcut, then you would get the same error. But since I have it on my shortcut, I, I opened it up in a different way. I opened up Adam here. I had no Chromes open at all. And then I opened up this asset file inside. I went like this and opened in browser, uh, which if you're using Adam, you would need a plugin to be able to do that. But anyway, that's a side point. Um, a neat thing though is there's another plugin called Open Browser Plus and here it is. I've just opened that up in Browser Plus and you can see hello, that the picture came in. So that's the picture in the background. These are the SVGs and that's the video. Uh, there's also sound that plays. Okay, so that picture in my, uh, in my Browser Plus here in Atom worked. So if you have a browser that works in your editor, probably that will bypass the cores issue or the error that we're getting. So that's what I do with a lot of students is we don't worry so much about that error because we're all viewing our code here. However, if you want to view it in a real browser, then um, what you would do is make sure that you do not open up here uh, initially. Once you open your browser, okay, so let's fix it. I'm going to close all these, close it all. This time, so you have to make sure all your Chromes are closed. I'm looking down here. I have no other Chromes open. Otherwise, it won't, might, you know, might not work. Uh, so all the Chromes are closed. And I first open my Chrome from the icon. Now we're ready to go. As long as that's been open from the icon, I can then right click here and say open in browser. And there it is working in the browser. So you see that? And if I F12 here, what was F12? I have no error about the cores error. This, this one's a, a tracking error, don't worry about that. Okay, so uh, there it is working, yay, in a browser. So sorry for those complexities, that's just how it is. It's a security error um, so that people don't download some HTML file that's got some JavaScript in it that will do bad things if you try and, you know, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> uh, like I said, it works. You don't have to worry about that if you upload it to a server. You're only worried about that if you're viewing it locally as you're building. And as you're building, you would know now how to fix that. Once again, that is all fixed. Let's go find where that is. You go to the Zim site. You can either go to the docs or you can go to tips. 
right here, tips. And under images, the very first thing you get to see is how to fix it so that we don't get that error. All right, and then we show you how to bring in a new picture and a couple different ways. Here's the lazy loading way. There's this thing called path. So let's just mention that now. The path is, uh, if you don't have a path here, then it assumes that your asset PNG is in the same folder. But if you add a path, that's the global path variable. If you add a path there, it will assume then it's in whatever that path is, slash assets.png. Uh, if you load in a path here, and say we went new pick asset.png, it would find this asset PNG inside of path. Great. If you then said new pick asset2.png and I didn't preload it, you see how asset2 is not here? I, I didn't pass in, say, this array right here with asset2 in it. So if I did not preload asset2, because path was set here, it will use that path. All right, so that means if I say new pick asset2.png, it will continue to use this path unless you override that path with, uh, with a new variable like that, in which case you could have said, I don't know, sound folder 2 or something. And then all of a sudden, if that were the new path, then our new sound or new odd, that is, A-U-D, or a new pick would pull from that path. Okay, so sound works much in the same way, and we're going to do another um, another docs video on sound as well. Um, but basically, both of those, both audio and or both odd and pick, are using asset in behind, and like I said, you can still use asset. All right, there is one more example of how to get by a cores problem. So the other other place where cores comes up, if you're trying to load an asset from some other server, then you might run into a cores error. You probably will, unless that other server uh, sets it up to allow cores from your server or from all servers. All right, so that's, uh, as it says here, that's so that content creators have more control over who's loading their assets. It used to be in, in the internet that you could just call a URL to anybody's asset and it would load in. Uh, well, content creators were sort of peeved by that because, you know, you got people loading pictures from your server, taxing your server, and you may not want them to. So they introduced a while back a way to stop that, and that's cross-origin resource sharing. That's what cores is. So we were getting a cores error just because we were trying to load an image from a fi uh, from like a local file on the canvas. That's sort of the same thing, but not really. It's actually just a security error, but it's it then boils down to a cores error. <laughs> but cores errors usually are when we try and load a picture or a sound or whatever it may be from some other domain. So you would have to go to that domain and say, hey, domain, uh, I'd love to load your pictures. Can you add a little bit of XML or a little HT access file or on the server that says cores is across cross origin resource sharing is okay. All right, most of the time though, you don't have access to that other server, which means you could be out of luck. So we have this thing that sort of tries to do cores busting and that would be you put in no cores image like that on image like that, set that to true and then put the URL to the image in here. So this, this would be an HTTPS. So you always have to use HTTPS, just a reminder there. Always use HTTPS. Uh, HTTP isn't accepted on the canvas with images. So uh, you got to use HTTPS. Uh, most likely that will be okay. And that means you're loading the image from some remote, uh, like an absolute URL, it's called some remote server. Well, could be your own server, but <laughs> usually we don't use an absolute URL for our own server. All right, so in that case, uh, you wouldn't have a path. You would just put the whole URL in there and this is one way that you can do it. When you go to load your assets, you pass in an object like that, that's a special asset object, or an array of these such objects. Um, you give it an ID and a source. Uh, by the way, when you, this is always available even when, 
uh, you're you're not doing uh, a no course. So this is one of those many ways to load an asset thing. You can load an ob asset object, at which point you can give it an ID. And then when you load the picture right here, when you got a picture here, you, you don't use the URL here, you use the ID, which would just be say asset or whatever the ID was special in that case. All right, I don't bother doing that. I find it more work to load the squiggly brackets with an ID and the URL. Uh, I find it just easier to put the URL there. <laughs> I think if you count the letters, it's less letters to just go ahead and do that. But some people, uh, some people like that better to use an ID in here. Yeah, you're welcome to do that. It's just, like I said, it's a bit longer, so I don't even really bother suggesting that. However, if you wanted to go to the, the, the no cores, then uh, that, that's your way to do it. There is an undocumented way to do it as well with an image object, I-M, capital I. But uh, we'd rather keep that undocumented just because uh, the course is there for a reason. It's almost like breaking the law to, well, it's not the law, but the law of the internet uh, to go and grab people's images like that. So I'd rather you not do it, but sometimes there's educational purposes or, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> There you go. All right, the other thing as well is that calls our server and works through a proxy to uh, to get to that image, which means you're sort of uh, taxing our servers as well to be able to convert uh, that, which isn't the best, it's okay, but we'd rather you not use it. <laughs> there you go. It may not work in all cases. We bumped into a few, it works in most cases, I would say 90% of the cases, in some cases, they've done something that we can't even sort of bypass that. All right, so those are the nuances then of loading an image. If you've stuck with us, uh, congratulations. Uh, what else should we show you? Maybe just, uh, well, okay, let's go to the docs again. Boop. The docs, and we're right here under pick. And we'll take a scan of this to make sure that we haven't missed anything. This was one thing that we wanted to show you was the asset example right here, which I think we've done now, but that's that's always there uh, if you wanna get to it. A little bit about preloading and lazy loading. There are ready and complete events when uh, you're lazy loading. Mm, a bit about what the pick is and some good examples of loading the pick. So I think that's all pretty good. And then file width and height, no cores. Oh, okay, so we did also provide a way to access the no cores right on the pick. I forgot about that. Okay, so that would be the attempt to bypass, which means that we probably don't have to go through that, uh, the asset object um, setup. And we also have a key out. So that's a method on that, that you can key out a color from the image. It's great. And there's type, so here it is. The type is pick, but if the pick is lazy loaded, then it's AC for asset container to start, or ACWD if it's an asset container with dimensions. And then once it's loaded, it becomes a type pick. There's access to the file that was used, uh, the file name, and there's access to the bitmap uh, that is the image inside the container. Great. I think that's good. Uh, if you pop into the frame here, the frame was the way, so here's frame. Frame was the way to load assets, uh, or has been the way to load assets traditionally. There's an example right there. Okay, and therefore we have the, all of the information is in here. So if you take a look at here we are assets, here are some options for the assets. You can just put the name of the asset, you can put an array, Here's an, uh, an asset object right there with the ID. Here's an array of asset objects. So this is all the sort of the different formats, oops, that you have. And, oh, uh, here's an asset tool. If you've got a lot of assets, you can browse to a certain directory and then select them. So what did this, this pick my desktop. So if I selected all those, open, then what it does is it makes an array of those assets for me. So there they, there, there they all are, <laughs> nice. And gets you started with a preloading thing and you hit copy that and that will then copy. So this is the assets tool that is available on the Zim uh, 
code section under tools. So right, right there, asset list that we'll give you. I'm glad we found that. I just clicked it by accident there. Uh, a little bit of information about the path, and then that's not it though. That's that's the asset param or assets parameter. There's also a couple methods here. The load assets. So load assets is how you can. Uh, this is where it all began here. So again, a whole bunch of information on how we can preload assets, as well as this is the. That's just the assets parameter, beep, 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 beep. different types of assets that is. And then down below, there's also asset. So we had load assets as a method, and here is asset as a method, which tells us the old way of accessing the assets and a bunch of extra information about, uh, about that, okay? So those might be called the official docs on loading assets. We've hopefully made it easier for you now by just introducing PIC, uh, the individual PIC. And um, like I said, should be pretty easy for you to use. There it is. Could have told you that in 30 seconds. <laughs> so I'm Dr. Abstract. We've on the, on the docs versions of these things, we like to take you through as much as we can uh, think of about this specific doc entry. Uh, but hopefully making it still accessible for those who are just beginning to code, not scare you completely. So uh, you don't necessarily need to listen to all of these things, but if you want to become a power user of Zim, then perhaps um, uh, this might help. All right, you can also look, look up any of our other video series like Explore for that too. Explore, we take a long time going through things. If you're a beginner and don't want a long time to go through things, you would take a look at the Zim Basic series or the Learn JavaScript series with Zim. Uh, those are two other series. You will find these things down here at the bottom of the docs of each entry, uh, right, right in here. We don't have one yet, and that's why we're making this one. But let, let's go to one where we do. I think we've got one for the frame, for instance. So if I open up frame, we got to scroll way down to the bottom of the frame. There we go. And it's called tour. So that will link through to a tour. The vids are just general vids about the, about the frame or whatever the um, command is. Bits will take you through um, tutorial examples. And then the code shows the code. There's not too much code in the pick. Like if we click it and scroll on down and go to code, you'll see that there's, it's a wrapper. So this is a wrapper object that wraps the, so there it is, that's what's in it. Not bad at all. And this basically wraps the load asset, or sorry, the, um, the asset command somewhere in here. I'm sure we'd find it. Control F, asset, right there. So it starts off as an asset container, and here we are trying to load the, uh, the asset. Hmm. Same image, lowercase. I thought that was a new, okay. Uh, I thought it was a new image object. Might just be image. Yeah, okay, uh, right. It's not new image with a capital I. It's image, round brackets, just like it would be asset, round brackets. Uh, by the way, anytime you look at the code in here, we stick Zim in front of our commands so that it would work if, if uh, you're working with a namespace um, version of Zim, which you can do by ZNS is true at any time. ZNS, uh, before you load Zim, would load in the namespace, or there's other ways too. Anyway, that's aside, aside uh, <laughs> from what we're looking at here, uh, we shall conclude then um, this docs on picks. Have a great day or night. I am Dr. Abstract. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Cheers. Come and visit us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord if you have any questions. Bye-bye.